Greetings and welcome back to another Powerhouse video on the For Health Scholars channel. My name is Dr. Arobasa and on this channel, I show current and aspiring healthcare management, administration, and public health professionals how to one, quickly and successfully earn their degrees, and two, how to start, build, and enjoy profitable careers within the business side of the healthcare industry globally. If this is your first time tuning into the channel, welcome. It is a pleasure e meeting you. And there are two things that I need you to do for me. The first one is to subscribe to this channel. And the second is to turn on your post notifications. Here's why. Each and every week I do go live or I share videos that answers many of the questions that you may have about the business side of the healthcare industry. I even answer questions that you probably can't find with a basic Google search. So definitely subscribe and definitely turn on your post notifications. I promise you don't want to miss out. Now, today's conversation is all about what you can expect from your first semester as a doctoral student. And this conversation is really for any doctoral student, but specifically, I'm going to give you advice if you are taking a business healthcare doctorate. So if you're doing a doctor of health administration, a doctor of public health, a PhD in either health administration, public health, or you're doing a DBA, so a doctor of business administration, but have a specialty in healthcare research or healthcare management, then this video is definitely definitely for you. So first things first, congratulations for making the decision to enroll into a doctoral program and then getting accepted. That is a very big accomplishment in itself. Many people do not get accepted into their school of choice or into a doctoral program. So the fact that you have been accepted and you're starting your semester, first semester rather, that is something to be celebrated. But during your first semester, you're going to go through a series of emotions. And so I wanted to provide you with this video today to kind of give you insight on what you should expect as a doctoral student in your first semester. So there are five particular things. One, you're going to be very excited. Two, you're going to engage in a series of didactic courses. You're going to have many deadlines that you need to meet. You're going to engage in scholarly reading and a lot of it. And also, you may feel overwhelmed. And when I say excitement, you're excited about the whole process, you're excited about getting accepted, you're excited about starting classes, and you're excited in starting your doctoral journey. That is uh, something really amazing and something you should be excited about. But in the same breath, right? You're also going to be completing a series of didactic courses. So depending on whether you're enrolled full-time or part-time, you're going to have your didactic courses. And for many um, doctoral students, um, you can try, this is a tip, try to see if your master's program, some of the courses can be transferable as transferable credit. So you can bypass some of these didactic courses, but do note that you will take a set of didactic courses. And so those courses can be introduction into research, um, learning about how to be a doctor in the given industry, whether you're doing health administration, public health, or business administration with a specialty, which your specialty will probably come later down the line in health management. So those didactic courses are just giving you some insight of what to expect for the program. It's also preparing you with some research courses. So you'll probably go through research methodologies, which is very important. I'm here to tell you, if you're doing a doctorate, please pay attention in your research methodology courses, your courses that teach you how to write your dissertation. I promise you, you're going to have to recall on that information once you get to the writing stages. But also, there are going to be many program and assignment deadlines. And when I say program deadlines, meaning that your financial aid is in place or your funding. So that is something very important that you need to know of before you start your doctoral program is how you're going to pay for it. OK, so having those deadlines in place, meeting with your advisor, if they do assign the advisor to you early on in your program, it's just subjective to different schools or universities and how they assign your advisor and when they will sign your dissertation supervisors. Some schools do it in the beginning, some do it in the middle of your program. And um, by the end, you should have definitely your dissertation or a capstone supervisor. Um, you're going to have many deadlines that you need to meet from your program and then the assignment deadlines, right? The When you're taking didactic courses, of course, you're going to have assignments that you need to submit. And these assignments are often writing heavy. So as a result of that, you're going to have to engage in a lot of scholarly reading. And when I say scholarly reading, reading research articles. And 
There is a strategy to read research articles in an effective manner, which I'll do another video on that. But just to give you a brief overview, you're going to be reading a lot of scholarly articles. I'm also going to do a video that shows you how to navigate the databases to find your scholarly articles, especially if you are a health administration, public health, or health management uh, doctoral student. So be familiar with the journals in your industry, um, general journals to find these scholarly articles because you're going to have to complete things like literature review. I mean, there's a list of assignments that is going to require you to use scholarly articles. When you get into your dissertation writing stages, you're definitely going to reference scholarly articles. So get used to reading them. And then as a result of it all, you're going to be feeling overwhelmed. And anxious probably. And I won't say this is a definitive feeling, but you're going to feel like the pressure because there's academic rigor that's embedded in any type of school program. So you want to make sure that you are aware that you may get to a point where you're going to be feeling overwhelmed or feeling anxious or nervous or fear, or even imposter syndrome. And I have a few videos on my channel that tells you how to kind of manage those feelings or overcome those feelings as they arise. So I'll link them in the description box, but do know that this is part of the feeling. And um, even if it's not overwhelmed, you're going to feel the pressure that comes with just engaging in the first semester of your doctoral program, which is very different than your master's and bachelor programs that you may have completed. So what are some of the advice that I can give you to help you manage your excitement, help you stay excited about your program, help you read scholarly articles, help you meet your program deadlines, and even um, manage the feelings of overwhelmness or even being nervous, etc. So if the first tip I can give you is to create a routine. Now, for many people are like, oh, do I need to create a routine? Yes, you do, okay? As I stated, at the doctoral level, this is a whole different ball game. And you have a lot of deadlines that you need to meet. And there are very few rooms for um, excuses or exemptions. So you need to have a solid routine in place, um, a designated time that you're able to work on your coursework throughout the week and even on the weekends. And so for me, and because I was working a full-time job for pretty much all of my program, I had to create a routine where I was like, okay, I'm going to go to work uh, from this time to this time. And then I was teaching. So I was a, I was also an adjunct faculty member. So I knew that I was going to teach my courses at this time. And so in between my day, I said, okay, my lunch breaks, I'm going to be reading my articles. When I get home from 10 to one o'clock in the morning, I am going to work on my doctoral studies. And it's not always easy because sometimes you're very tired. And so I would make sure from like the eight to 10 o'clock period, I would get a nap. So that was how I survived my doctoral program because I'm not a person who works well when I'm tired. And there's I don't care how many deadlines are, are there or present. If I'm not well rested, nothing's going to happen. My brain doesn't work. I'm, I can't write. It sounds like gibberish. So what I would do is take naps. So I would make sure that from eight, to 10 o'clock. I'm not talking to anybody on the phone. I'm not handling anything, especially on the days that my classes, I had them earlier in the day. I made sure I got off work on time. So any work that I needed to do that if it was at a certain point by 4.30, I was like, okay, uh, I'm going to have to do that tomorrow. Like, so I really created a routine for myself to help me survive, especially during the first semester, because I was also doing my doctoral program full time. So you need to create a routine. And through this routine, just note that success involves repetition and consistency. When you're consistently doing something and you're doing it repeatedly, it allows you to build up the stamina, the tenacity to get things done. And in your doctoral program, if you watch um, my video in the doctoral series that I called Becoming a Doctor of Health Administration, I talk about the TTG, and that means time, tenacity, and grit. And how you overcome these things or is really to create a system that allows you to be consistent and you just rinse and repeat. If it's working, rinse and repeat. If it's not working, change it for something that is working and then rinse and repeat. So success involves repetition and consistency. Then start creating a support system. And this is something I wish I knew early on in my doctoral program. Although I have my family, my friends, um, I really needed a group of people in my life like to know that when ish hit the fan and things starts to become really challenging, 
that they are, their role is to really be there for me in a capacity that probably they've never been there for me before. And sometimes, and I, I'm going to shout out my sister for this because she, I called her and the times when I was having a not so good day, I just vented and she allowed me to vent. And then once I was done, she allowed me to regroup and we had conversation. You're going to need that. You're going to need people in your life who understands that this is a journey that is very unique. Your doctoral journey is very unique. And it's something that you've never experienced before, unless you are a repetitive PhD -er or you did a, like a medical doctor program. So you can understand the highs and lows of doing such a high level degree and the rigorousness that comes with it. So creating a support system, having these people in your, in your support and, you know, feeling free to go to them when you're in need of them, that is important. And then connect with your advisor and advising team and ask questions. Now your advisor is, can be someone different than your dissertation supervisor. So your advisor, you, you've probably had this in your undergraduate and even master's program was a person who's assigned to you or a team of people who is assigned to you to just help you go through the college process. So you see it at the undergraduate level, they're the ones helping you create your schedule. And at the doctoral level, you may have an advisor a team in place outside of your dissertation supervisor. I did, and they knew my name because I would call them. I would request a meeting with my advisor. We would do check-ins because you need somebody who can help you understand the process that you're going through, how to help manage your deadlines, how to make sure that you're writing efficiently. They give you support services, and they really can even help mitigate challenges that you may be going through as a doctoral student. I remember I had a particular challenge with a particular assignment that I was working on and my professor, she wasn't responsive. And I remember going to my advising team, just telling, asking them questions on how can I get a solution to this problem? Because I'm always a person who likes to be proactive. And so I, I called them and I was like, okay, how do I get access to a certain database so that I'm able to do this assignment and submit it on time? Because meeting your deadlines are very important. And um, I called my advisor and they were able to help me. They were able to advise me, oh, the library has this service, speak with the librarian, they can help you. So do connect with your advising team. They are there to help you. And once again, these advisors are separate from your dissertation supervisor or um, the capstone supervisor. These are people who they're going to walk with you through the journey. As you're going, they'll check in with you. They'll let you know that they're your advising team because they'll send you emails. They'll ask to meet with you. But I would tell you to utilize that service and then ask as many questions that you have as possible. And then take notes by paper or digitally. You should have some type of paper, book, or if you're a person like me who likes to write on an iPad or computer or type, I don't really want to write it out because sometimes you write fast, you miss it. Um, take note. When you're reading your scholarly articles, there's a formula that you can apply to take notes, okay? You're not going to remember it all. It all. And the best way when you're managing all of what comes with your first semester as a doctoral student, you want to have a place where you can reference like, okay, I took a note for this. I know there's a guideline I need to meet here. There's a uh, meeting I need to go to here. You want to make sure that you are organized and you have some type of productivity system in place. And the best way to do it, even if it's not this extensive system, I know people are offering Notion and ClickUp and all of these digital platforms, but just having a notebook next to you or a notes list of just things that you need to do. Um, notes that you took down from a conversation that you had, when you go back, it was really, really helpful to you. And so those are the tips that I can offer you as a first semester student in a doctoral program. Once again, congratulations for getting to that point. But if you are not enrolled in a doctoral program and you would like someone to help you kind of advise you in the process, um, Get, tell you what the application process is all about, review your documents for your application, then I encourage you to work with me. I do offer one hour consultations in which I can sit down and really help you create your doctoral plan. I can also review your application, help you kind of review the pros and cons of the universities that you want to go to, especially in the business side of the healthcare industry. I can use my experience as a professor, but also a person who has gone through it to advise you on what are the best steps to take in 
getting to your application and submitting your DHA or PhD application for review and with the hopes of acceptance. So if you would like to work with me, here is how you can. You can click the link in my description, in the description box, and I'll be more than happy to assist you. So once again, I want to thank you for watching today's video. I hope that it was really instrumental to you and let you know that it's okay what you're going through as a doctoral student. We've all been through it. And I hope that this channel can give you some reprieve and resources to make sure that you can manage and master your first semester with great success. Until the next video, make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Bye for now.